I'm Dan Aykroyd. In addition to my work as a writer and actor, I have also pursued a lifelong interest in the supernatural and the paranormal. The following story is inspired by such events and is taken from the actual case files of the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research. You know, Peter, a lot of people have faced this kind of challenge, this kind of opportunity, and they said no. Now, they will never know how much they've lost. They'll never know how much of their soul they've killed by refusing to dive into the ocean that lay before them. An ocean of dreams, glistening in the sun, blue with the promise of something better, something golden. Something perfect. This is the place. This is the moment. The chance is yours. Take it. Take it. You want me to sign this? And dive into your ocean, Peter. Sign it. It's uh, Henry Kemper, uh, Coburn, Jackson, and Dixon Insurance Brokers. Well, how do you do, Mr. Kemper? I'm Anton Hendricks, Director of Operations. I'm sorry to drag you down to our lab, but I felt it was the most convenient thing for you. Not at all. <laughs> Listen, they call me Hank, too, huh? <laughs> it's a great place you got here, you know? It looks like a couple of semis from the outside, but in here, wowie. It's like something out like of Star Trek. <laughs> Scotty, I'm trapped. <laughs> Mr. Kemper. Uh, uh, Hank? Hank. I understand you're investigating Mrs. Wilson's life insurance claim. Yeah, right you are. Now, the, uh, the police call this one an accident. <laughs> Bizarre accident, mind you. I mean, uh, the guy blew up. And uh, <clears throat> I want to be very careful with this one. Mr. Wilson had a very large insurance policy, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I want to be as thorough as I can. <clears throat> of course. So what, uh, what exactly did you guys uh, dig up? Hmm? Well, nothing very conclusive. I'm afraid our investigation is still ongoing. Uh, but our lead investigators will bring you up to speed. <clears throat> ah, super duper. Can't wait. <laughs> ah, speak of the devil. I'd like you to meet Lindsay Donner and uh, Peter Axon. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Hello there. Nice to meet you, Mr. Camper. Pleasure. I'll let you two take it from here. Thanks, Thanks Anton. Thank you. Well, have a seat. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes. 
So, you want to know what happened? Absolutely. Now, I know the basic uh, setup, but uh, what exactly was happening up there to make all these rich folks go wacko? <laughs> Environmental anomalies. Horses. Big pardon? I'm right on this one, Lindsay. Uh, only if you believe in powerful otherworldly forces, Peter. <laughs> there were forces. Otherworldly is ridiculous. Yeah, and your theory isn't? Come on. Well, I... well, why, why don't we just start with one story at a time, huh? <clears throat> Mr. Axon, why don't you lead us on? Uh, well, after some preliminary investigating, uh, the one common denominator in the case turned out to be two residents of the community, a Todd and Serena Wilson. Further investigation determined that the erratic and sometimes aberrant behavior exhibited by all the residents of the Elysian Estates had only begun after the Wilsons had moved into the neighborhood. Once I had initiated contact with Mr. Wilson through a seemingly innocent game of golf, he invited me and my wife to dinner and I knew we had a chance to crack the case. It was a routine undercover operation for some of us. Look at these houses. They are freaking huge. Yeah, they are. All right, now listen. Just remember, get them to talk about strange occurrences, all right? Everything they say could be relevant to the case. Everything? Really? Yes, Lindsay. Now, for some reason, my colleague here seemed much more excited by the prospect of hobnobbing with the nouveau riche than ferreting out information from our potential suspects. After all our prep work, it was very disappointing. Just remember your undercover identity, all right? Okay. Wait! What is it? Smith. Peter and Lindsay Smith. All right? We've been married ten years. Ten, ten, ten years? Yeah, be wow. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, very good. Hi, Todd. Peter Smith. Good to see you again. My God, perfection. Uh, excuse me? You must be Lindsay. Yes. I'm Todd Wilson. Welcome. <laughs> Peter's told me so much about you. He has? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> yes. Uh... Come in, come in. The night awaits us in all this Bacchanalian glory. So what you're saying is uh, Todd Wilson was a friendly sort of guy, huh? <laughs> Friendly? Well, that's one way to say it. I don't know how else to put it, other than to say the man seemed obsessed with sex. Whoa. <laughs> oh, Peter, you devil! Should have warned me about her. Hmm? Lindsay, she's delectable. You are a lucky man. Right. Thank you. Say, didn't you mention having a wife yourself? Todd? Hmm? Wife? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, she's in the kitchen. Very good. And uh, Mrs. Wilson, what, what was she like? Like her uh, husband, Mrs. Wilson also seemed very comfortable with her sexuality. Rena! Oh, you're here. I had no idea. <laughs> I'd like you to meet Peter and Lindsay. How do you do? Hi. Hi. Oh, I'm making a marinara sauce, and I would just die if I got any of my new dress. <laughs> Just give me a second. Don't you wish they could walk around looking like that 24-7, eh, Peter? Okay. I'm decent. <laughs> <laughs> now, why don't you give Lindsay the tour? <laughs> I've got a task for Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Requires someone manly. Manly, huh? <laughs> so, uh, what'd you have in mind for you? <laughs> Should I run a little hot water over it? No, oh, I'm fine. <laughs> I've been hearing some stories about uh, people in this area acting strangely. <laughs> oh. hmm. My hero. Thank you. You're welcome. So, you were asking about the neighbors? Yeah, well, uh, a couple of the, uh, the boys in the pro shop were kind of talking about it. Oh, yes. Poor Mrs. Murray. But if belly dancing in the Valley of Kashmir is our life stream, well, I say let her live it. But, uh, don't you think... Try the sauce. You'll die. No, thank you. I really, uh, don't want to spoil my appetite. The Sicilians believe 
But a truly good sauce comes alive only when tasted from the skin. So suck it. Please. Yeah! What was that? What was what? Excuse me. I'll be right back. What's what wrong? is it? What's wrong? You first. Well, it's, it's Todd. I, I thought I saw. I, I mean, he showed me his. <laughs> no, 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 no. Lindsay, did you find out anything about the case? Um, the case. Um, uh, oh, no. No, 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 I didn't. Come here. Come here. <laughs> we'll switch, okay? You go talk to Serena. I will handle Todd. Off you go. Okay. <sighs> Lindsay? Hmm? Case, remember? Focus on the case. 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 Okay. That's not at all what happened. Really? I'd hardly wait to hear your version. Okay. Well, yeah, and we will. <laughs> but please, let's just finish with yours first, Mr. Axon. Thank you. Well, I went looking for Todd. Todd. <sighs> Hi, Peter. Hi, Todd. Well, that Lindsay's quite a woman, isn't she? Uh, yeah, she is, isn't she? I say, you know, uh, she was kind of spooked just now. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I threw her for a loop, did I? <laughs> well, I'll show you what I showed her. No! Oh. Uh. Huh? Isn't that a beauty? <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, say, uh, Todd, you know, I've been uh, wondering about all the uh, strange behavior in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, people have been acting strange lately. Like that poor Mr. Schwartzbaum. Uh-huh. You know, personally, I wouldn't give up a million-dollar law practice to take up wakeboarding full-time, but it makes him happy. Yeah, why do you think a person would make that kind of a change? You know, I think people have to draw the line somewhere, take a stand. Uh. Look inside. Oh, 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 damn it. That's my rotator cuff. Oh, it's acting up again. Peter, could you please just give me a rub? Just below the joint, if you could. Oh, um, just, you know, yeah. It's been acting up ever since the golf tournament last month. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. You have hands of gold, dude. <laughs> you were talking about the people in the neighborhood taking a stand? Yeah, I think people get bored. Same food, same job, same routine. We crave variety. I mean, we quite literally have to save ourselves from ourselves. By uh, looking inside? Well, by trying new things. Being open up to the possibilities of... Things we never considered before. <laughs> um, I... is, is that Hugo Boss? <laughs> it is, isn't it? That's. Yeah. That smells great. That must drive the boy nuts, huh, Peter? <laughs> Peter, I want to thank you for the rub down. Now, come on, let's go get some food, huh? <laughs> Wowie, so, uh, what'd you conclude from all that, Mr. Axon? I'll tell you, Mr. Camper. Something was wrong with Todd Wilson. Very wrong. Smoke coming out of the dumper? Wow. Well, Mr. Wilson's policy, uh, notes a taste for fine cigars, but <laughs> that toilet smoking thing, that, that just ain't normal. No. No, it isn't. But it'll all become clear when I'm done. Later, we sat down mm. to dinner. Mm. Oh, the sauce is heavenly. Mm. More, more, more. I'm Todd. You love everything I make. Do you think it is too much oregano, Lindsay? Hmm? No, I think she likes it just fine. <sighs> Pete, what's the matter? I'm hardly touching your food. Oh, I'm just trying to pace myself. Do you put mushrooms in everything you make? Oh, you know this, did you? We've discovered that several amazing varieties of mushrooms grow right here on the property. 
We can't stop eating them. And Serena's found new and exciting ways to use it in our diet. <laughs> Mushroom salads, teas, pies. It's even in the wine. Even in the wine. Mm. Real mushrooms or are those, those funky ones the, uh, the college kids like to eat? The funky ones. Holy macanoli. So did it make him do anything funny? Yeah, you might say that. Oh! <laughs> I'm here to take your soul! <laughs> Things just degenerated from there. Although Lindsay wasn't complaining. <laughs> oh, Peter, you look so uncomfortable. That is not cool, uh, you, you know, I, I don't think I want to do this. You got into photography and started thinking, hey, why not at least have themes in these pictures? <laughs> Ooh, he's a Viking warrior! <laughs> oh, Peter, you should see the look in your face right now. I really like this one. <laughs> you know, it's really getting late, and we should probably be heading home. Serena, darling, why don't you take me so you can go check on the dessert situation? Because I want some man time with my new friend, Peter. Oh. Just don't tire me out. The night is still enough. Dessert! Peter, there's dessert! <laughs> Come on, Peter, I'll show you my games room. Oh. Games room? <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> he wanted me to do something that'll blow your mind. Uh-oh. Alone at last. Uh, <laughs> look, uh, Todd, uh, I don't know exactly uh, what you're thinking right now, but but I... I, I, I can't... And, 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 and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm flattered, but it... I feel your pain. I feel your inner conflict. Todd, I... You I'm... know, I've seen hundreds of guys like you, tired, overworked, cut off, afraid, all lacking one thing, one vital thing. What's that? Desire. <laughs> you know, Peter... People blame desire for so many things. They say that desire causes conflict and anger and fighting, war, high taxes, slow mail service, bad weather, and even in a few outlying states, they blame desire for low sperm count. <laughs> I say to hell with that. Yeah. All right. Now, Peter, what I want to know from you is, what is your greatest desire? Tell me. I... Huh? Huh? Peter, I'm going to introduce you to the most wonderful opportunity of your life. Get ready for this. Peter Smith, I give you... Friends of Money! pyramid well i thought he was trying to get into your pen the only thing he was trying to get into was my wallet oh lunch bag let down i'll give him this much his pitch was polished peter when you bring in your third tier friend and they merely bring in another five ninth tier sales associates you can recoup one fifth of your original investment isn't that amazing <laughs> so what do you say hey uh I, I, I don't know, Todd. Okay. You know, Peter, a lot of people have faced this kind of challenge, this kind of opportunity, and they said no. They will never know what they've lost. They will never know how much of their soul they've killed because they refused to dive into the ocean that lay before them. An ocean of dreams. He just went on and on about oceans and dreams and glistening in the sun. I just wanted to go home. Something perfect. The chance is yours. Take it. You owe me to sign this. And dive into your ocean, Peter. Sign it. And it was at that point that my colleague, who was obviously high on mushrooms, stumbled into the room. What did you do? No! 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 What are you, no! What are you doing? No! My husband! 
So what the heck happened to him? Todd Wilson was a victim of spontaneous human combustion. He was a victim of environmental anomalies beyond his control. When he licked the end of his quill, he ingested white phosphorus that was contained in the outdated ink. And this, combined with the high alcohol content in the system, and that, that cognac he was drinking must have been 200 proof. It created a highly flammable environment in his stomach, and all it needed was a spark. Well, so why was he acting so weird? Elysian Estates was built over an old meth lab that burned to the ground. It was an illegal lab that produced mass quantities of PCP. When Wilson picked and ate the mushrooms that were growing on his property, he also ingested hallucinogenic toxins that had seeped into the soil. I believe that his unusual behavior can be attributed to his regular consumption of these affected mushrooms. Oh, please. So all the other hobnobs went wacko because they had dinner with the Wilsons. Well, they were unwillingly submitted to Serena Wilson's mushrooms for a new America diet. Believe me, this was environmental not paranormal you uh you see things differently miss donner you bet i do todd wilson was something more than just a rich guy who blew up he was much much more than that he was pure evil really <laughs> evil. So you think that what happened to Mr. Wilson was not this uh, SHC or uh, spontaneous human combustion like your partner posits? No, that was not the cause of Todd Wilson's death. Well, well then what was? Something supernatural. Uh, not, uh, not booze and shrooms? Not even close. Let me start at the beginning and tell you what really happened. The part about strange behavior in the community is true, don't get me wrong. And Peter did a wonderfully adequate job of setting up the meeting. Of course, skillfully executing an undercover operation, well, that's a different matter. Peter seemed unusually anxious about the cloak and dagger aspect of our assignment. Oh, geez, I don't know about this. What if they figure out we're not who we said we are? Just shift the topic of conversation. Be fine. Okay. I'll try, but I, you know, I... I really hate lying. Peter, it's not lying, okay? It's called gathering information. Right, right, right. Okay. You ready? Well, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come here, come here. Come here. Just breathe, deep breath. Hi there. Hello. No, hi, Todd. This is uh, Ms. My, my, my wife, Lindsay. Welcome, Lindsay. Hello, thank you. And it's good to see you again, Peter. Hi. Come in, Hi. come in, please, please. Yeah, so what was uh, your first impression of Mr. Wilson? Todd Wilson was a perfect gentleman. Stop. And was uh, Serena Wilson the seductress that Mr. Axon here described? Serena! <laughs> well, in my opinion... Hi! I'd be surprised if she could spell seductress, much less be one. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Just bought this new dress, and the sales lady said that if I spilled something on it, I couldn't take it back. So I. <laughs> My sincerest apologies, darling. I should have given you more warning that our guest had arrived. <laughs> okay, I'm decent. <laughs> and you look lovely, my buttercup. Um... Yeah, how about a tour? Oh, that'd be lovely. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, the wife wasn't exactly the sharpest pencil in the drawer. Far from it. <laughs> hey, what about Mr. Wilson? Hmm? Todd. He was, um, charming. Charming? <laughs> really? <sighs> While Peter was occupied in the kitchen with Serena, I spent some quality time with Todd. Well, that tells a different story. Doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I can't even discuss art with my wife. She just finds it uninteresting. It's so unfortunate. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Serena's a wonderful woman her own way, but... So, Lindsay Smith, what do you do when you're not admiring neorealism? Hmm? I, I... I run a marketing firm in town. Hmm? Yeah. Actually, Peter and I were thinking of moving out here for some 
peace and solitude. Well, I think you'd both make a wonderful addition to the community. I'd be happy to recommend you to the Homeowners Association if you like. Well, that's so kind. But can I confide in you? Yes, please. We've heard some rather disturbing stories about Elysian Estates. People behaving strangely, even that some of the residents had to be institutionalized. Well, one man's insanity is another man's freedom. <sighs> now, it sounds a lot more tragic than it actually is. I mean, each of us must do what we have to do to free our souls. I have my art collection. Some people enjoy hemp farming. Because I have one more piece of art that I'd like to show you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's, it's just a tattoo I had done during a pilgrimage at the Kluwani Harvest, and it's something that made me feel alive, and I thought I could share that with you. <laughs> oh, come on! My scream was not that high-pitched. Whatever. <laughs> but there was something that you conveniently left out of your account. Peter? Peter? What happened? Korea got my opa again. Slow, slow, slow down. Wait, slow down. Take it easy. Korea? Free my baby. Take some clock. I ain't got mushrooms, man. Mushrooms? Peter, you are allergic to mushrooms. I didn't know it when you're gone. I don't my tongue to go whore up. I got gone, puppy. Open your mouth. Let me see. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's swollen. But it's not too bad. You'll live. <laughs> I won't go back in there, okay, Sharia? You scare me. Okay, I'll go talk to her. Go find a bathroom, rinse your mouth with some cold water, and Peter, try and stay focused on the case. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What a crock! So you're saying Professor Axon did eat the mushrooms? Oh, yes. That true? I, I had a little taste, and my tongue did swell up a little bit, but the rest of what I told you is absolutely the truth. Mm. Mm. Hi. Is your hubby okay? Oh, he'll be fine. He's allergic to mushrooms. Oh. Wow. Uh, that's too bad, because I put him in everything we're eating tonight. <laughs> it's even in that wine you're drinking. Mushroom wine? Mm-hmm. Pretty good, huh? It's Toddy's recipe. He loves mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> it was then that I suspected we were dealing with dark forces of evil, and that Todd Wilson was at the center of it all. You were stoned. One of the basic tenets of Satanism is that things that live under the Earth's surface can be used as tools for evil. It makes sense that mushrooms and insects would be interchangeable. It does? How's that? I'm talking about the worship of dark forces. Mephisto, Beelzebub, the Prince of Darkness. Come again? The Devil. Oh, right. <laughs> Devil. Right. Now, I wasn't sure until later, but keep this in mind. In the sacred texts of the Necronomicon Necromortis, mm. a covenant exists. When you sign your name to anything, anything that a demon has also signed, he will take your soul. Huh. I did not know that. <laughs> then we sat down for dinner, but mm. Peter couldn't eat, of course, because of his allergies to mushrooms. And the sauce, perfect. Mm. Todd, you know what I want. Now's not the time, though, darling. We, we, we have company. But I can't enjoy the meal without it. Choo-choo, here comes the choo-choo train. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love it when you feed me, Todd. <laughs> More. Mm. I, I trust everything's to your liking. Mm. Mm. Absolutely divine. Oh, right, peanut bar. I'm sorry. Um, Todd, you were saying something earlier about the need to feed our souls. What did you mean by that? Actually, you know, our soul is the most neglected form of the human animal. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Our most precious asset, our most wonderful gift left to grow fallow. And you know <laughs> why? Not enough choo-choo trains? <laughs> <laughs> Crackers and cheese. 
Any quackers? <laughs> because the soul terrifies us. We don't know how to talk to it. We don't know how to make love to it. Cornflakes. We gotta have cornflakes. So you're saying that the people at Elysian Estates went mad because they didn't make love to their souls? Well, undoubtedly you're familiar with the great violin virtuoso Niccolo Paganini. Of course. He was born October 27, 1782 in Genoa. Died May 27, 1840 in Nice. Touché. So impassioned and intricate were the pieces that he performed. You know the people of Italy truly believed he was in league with the devil? They feared his talent. Exactly. And yet his only conspirator was his soul. So why all this devil nonsense? Because they didn't understand the soul. They didn't know how high it could soar. Who's to say that an unfulfilled proctologist can't find truth and happiness in becoming a circus freak? Is that man any more insane or in league with the devil than Maestro Paganini? Now, I will admit that as I conversed with Todd, my suspicions about him began to wane. And Peter wasn't overly concerned. But then... Todd, are we going to play the other game? The one we play after dinner? Oh, yes, we are, my two drops. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> as the evening wore on, I decided to play along with this Dark Souls flight of fancy. But I was unable to find any concrete physical evidence. No sharpened fingernails, no cloven hey. feet, no tail like growth, nothing. So it was all just your imagination? Far from it, my friend. Far from it. How long are they going to be down there? A while. And what are they doing? <laughs> You'll find out soon enough. <sighs> oh, but it's a good thing. Trust me. Hmm. How good? Todd knows what's best for people. To make them happy. It's his thing, you know? What he's good at. And how does he do that? How does he make them happy? He gives them what they really want. Todd can make your dreams come true. If you believe in him. And then I began to sense something. It was as if I was holding evil in my very hands. And there it was, his reflection in the mirror. Well, well, wait a second, then. Perfume? Holy water, actually. I always keep some on me. You never know when you might need it. Yeah, but that type of stuff only works on vampires. What am I saying? Holy water, Deus Aqua will harm anything unholy. Uh, by unholy, you mean? I mean unholy. Peter! No! No! What are you doing? No! 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 What have you done? What have you done? Sprayed him, he smoked, kaboom. It was game over for the evil entity known as Todd Wilson. So Mr. Wilson exploded because you sprayed him with holy water? Of course. Because he was the devil? <laughs> Please, Mr. Kemper. That's a little extreme. He was a demonic being. The first indicator was a pentagram, the mark of the beast, and then the visions of creatures that live in the earth. Then for a split second, I saw his true face, the face of evil. And I knew what I had to do. You were high as a kite on mushrooms. I saved you from having your soul stolen. Yeah, by spraying him with Pope John Paul O de Toilette. No, what if he was <clears throat> some evil guy, right? What did he want? I mean, why go through the motions of having a nice dinner? 
Well, demons want two things, to steal innocent souls and to create chaos. The friends of Money Pitch, well, that was just his M.O. So everybody in the community went mad because Todd Wilson stole their souls. He tempted them, and you for that matter, with freedom from their dull lives. All they had to do was sign a piece of paper that he had already signed, and pow, it's a done deal. So, Hank, you go with my version, right? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> this is the craziest case I ever worked. <clears throat> you know, both your stories were, were excellent. I mean, entertaining, even. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. You're saying that you don't believe either of us? I'm sorry, but quite frankly, without proof, I wouldn't believe the sky was blue. <laughs> no, I don't see how either one of your stories checks out. Well, look, why don't you just wait until we... Until what? Oh, until your fire within story gets proven? Sorry, Mr. Axon, doesn't work that way. It doesn't Serena deserve to know what really happened? No, maybe not. Maybe she ought to just take the dough and never know that her old man was Satan. <laughs> or that he blew up because of his diet. Anywho, thanks for the input. The boys down at Central Office are never going to believe this one. <laughs> Toodles. I think I'll go cut Mrs. Wilson a check right now. <laughs> Necronomicon, little brother. Yeah, you are so wrong about... I know a hell of a lot more than you do about this phenomenon, so don't you even start. Yeah, well, excuse me, but the last time I checked, this was the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research. The study of dark forces is a legitimate form of research, and just because you don't buy into it doesn't mean that I'm a flake. Honey, you were on drugs. And you were this close to losing your soul. Oh, please, I, I was happen. not. Actually, you're both wrong. I've just received our autopsy of what is left of Todd Wilson, and it's quite different from the county coroner's report. How so? Todd's remains did show traces of pure alcohol, but hardly enough to cause the explosion that killed him. Yeah, but that was combined with the white phosphorus in the ink. Again, there were flammable toxins in his body, but they did not cause him to combust. Aha! Uh -huh. So you're telling me that Lindsay's psychedelic trip is the real story? Further analysis of the mushrooms found on the Wilson's property revealed that they had no hallucinogenic properties at all. What? I was right. He was a demon. I mean, why else would he explode when I hit him with holy water? Uh, actually, I was just coming to that. Your container of holy water wasn't exactly all that holy. Pardon me? The priest who blessed your deus aqua was a fake. He was arrested three weeks ago for posing as a man of the cloth. I'm afraid you sprayed Todd Wilson with ordinary tap water. Well, it looks like this one's going down in the books as uh, unsolved. Wilson, I, uh, I am sorry for your loss. <clears throat> Why don't I come in? Of course. I've got nothing but time now. <clears throat> Thank you. Here. Thank you. So, he didn't blow up from drinking hard booze or smoking. And he didn't blow up because of my holy water. No. So what the heck turned him into a Roman candle? You know, you said something earlier. If you sign something a demon gives you, he takes your soul. Is that right? That's right. And what happens if you don't sign? What's the punishment in demon land for losing a soul? I guess it would cost you your earthly form. Todd blew up when I didn't sign. You're right. He was a demon. And all the victims signed the Friends of Money contracts. And look who countersigned them. Serena Wilson. This house has been so empty and cold since poor Todd died. Hmm? Oh, I, I'm sure it has, uh, Mrs. Wilson. <laughs> you know this isn't about the money, don't you, Mr. Kemper? It's about remembering my Todd in a manner that he would have appreciated. You buy collecting a lot of money. <laughs> exactly. Right. Now, I just need you to uh, sign off on these affidavits, if you would. Just, you know, 
here, 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 and here. And then I can cut you <clears throat> a very large checkerino. You never know when it's your time to go, do you, Hank? When life, as you know it, might end suddenly. Well, that's, that's why uh, God invented Disneyland. <laughs> Your soul is asleep, Hank. It's crying out to be awakened. And I know exactly how to wake it up. Holy cats. <laughs> That's some setup. Fascinating proposal, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is, Mrs. Wilson. <laughs> so if I bring in uh, two more uh, friends, I can triple my initial investment. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's some payback. And that's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. You see, the money sets your soul free. Really? Free to do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, you first. <laughs> Your turn. My turn. <laughs> Oops. You know, it's funny, Mrs. Wilson. I uh, originally thought you were a bit of a kook, you know. But, uh, you know, after hearing your pitch and, and, and chatting with you like this, it's... Well, you're all right. <laughs> Thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> She's a demon. Very happy one, too. She just took your soul. Really? Well, just because I signed that uh, piece of paper? Yes. <sighs> That's how it works. Well, uh, according to a reputed demonologist friend of mine, uh, in order for you to claim my soul, I've got to sign something you uh, gave me. <clears throat> mm. That contract belong to you? <laughs> you just bought some boat insurance, Mrs. Wilson. <laughs> the expensive kind. <laughs> you son of a... Nah, never try to scam an insurance man, Mrs. Wilson. <laughs> no! No! Ah! 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 That she wasn't the level? Yeah. <laughs> Fifteen years in the insurance business, my friendly. Nice That's how. You grow an antenna for this kind of thing. Uh, you're a demon sensor. That takes all types. <laughs> so what are you going to put in the report? Oh, this one's force majeure if I've ever seen it. Act of God. <laughs> Somebody helped us beat the devil at his own game. <laughs> See you in church. Interest in the paranormal has become a cornerstone of our modern folklore. Recent surveys reveal that nearly 50% of the world's population believe in the supernatural. Regardless of statistics, people will always look to the unexplainable, the unknown, with intense fascination. For Sci Factor, I'm Dan Aykroyd.